You know, I think getting a vehicle that can be electric or gas is good. <laughs> I got a friend, they ordered a truck, and it uh, can be either gas or electric. Because honestly, passing through Illinois, gas 450 a gallon is just common over there. Thank God it's cheaper over here. Yes, indeedy. I filled up at Walmart last night, and because I, I'm a member of their little club, I got it for 376 a gallon last night. That's not bad. I really prefer 176. I remember the good old days. Well, to be exact, you know, before there was a, uh, a, a theft in our nation, <laughs> Open your Bibles to the book of Amos, Amos chapter 9. That is, for those of you that don't know where Amos is, that's page number 798. Yeah, I have a word for you, and the word I have for you, uh, I will enjoy giving it. I'm not sure you will enjoy receiving it, but anyway, you're going to get it whether you like it or not. See, uh, I, I've been beginning to really challenge people because we are prone to identify love as protective. But then again, if I'm protective of you, I want to keep you from hurting you. I had somebody got mad at me because they called a church a hospital, and I said, no, a church is a, a threshing floor. It cleans out the trash, you know, or the chaff from the wheat. But I'm telling you straight up, it's going to get harder, but you're going to have to get smarter. And the smartness is to see beyond your moment and quit looking back. Because without a vision, people are restrained. They perish. And there's things that God's put in my heart to share with you, and I'm going to try to keep it. Well, dog, get Baptist hours in five minutes, and I can't do it all in five minutes. You say, when's Baptist hour 12 noon? That's the way they can go get in line at the restaurant, you know, and be the first one there. In the book of Amos, I was in Columbia, South America, and my interpreter, I gave this scripture, and he uh, rerouted it and changed what I was meaning into something he understood. And I made the statement here in Amos chapter 9, verse 13, with verse 12, Let's go ahead and go with the verse 11, 12, and 13. In that day I will raise up the tabernacle of David that has fallen. Now, if you ever want to look at the tabernacle of David, it is the house of praise. It is the house of worship. It is a relationship of honor that you have that God honors you, but you honor God. Because I've always found that what you take for granted can be taken from you. And when you take your family for granted, when you begin to take what's valuable and priceless, and when somebody trusts you and they literally believe in you, when you take that relationship for granted, it begins to chip away of the quality and the sincerity that you might have toward them. Because do you realize when the word says in Proverbs 3, that to trust in the Lord, I believe that trusting is like breathing. You should do it without thinking. But then again, when your reputation precedes you, then the expectation bereaves you. What do you mean bereaves? It calls sorrow. Because when you have a reputation of not keeping your word, and see the word says in Psalms, it says, who will ascend to the holy hill of God? He that has clean hands and a pure heart. Didn't mean that you didn't have dirty hands at one time. It means you've washed your hands. You've separated the past from your present. But then he says, he that has clean hands and a pure heart and swears to his own hurt and changes not. And in walking around and meditating, I heard the Lord speak to me. And he said, the value you put up on what you protect is the value of what you inspect. Because honestly, you know, when a woman has a nice diamond ring that's her wedding ring, and you know, it's a Mother's Day, and, and then many mothers have a colored stone for each 
month of the children that she bore in a ring. I mean, my mother had a ring that had five different stones, and there was, you know, one that was, you know, in October, and then there was one in September, and then there was one in December, and then there was one in November, and I mean, it was five of us. So she had a ring that had five different stones, and and each one represented the 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 stone that would represent that month of the birth of that child. But see, when one stone come loose, that does not mean it's prophetic as much as sometimes we go through things that don't happen the way we want them to. So you go to the jeweler and you get that stone reset. And it's like a diamond. You know, I'm writing a, a, a book now on uh, encouraging words for diamonds. You say, what are diamonds? People that have been under pressure can withstand the pressure and have become priceless. Because a diamond is created out of pressure. And it takes time to be under pressure that makes your pricelessness more valuable. And so thereby I'm encouraging you to realize that when God talks about trusting him. And I was praying and meditating and he gave me the scripture in Matthew about it is better that you pluck out your eye than it is to Go, go into hell with two eyes. It's better you go to heaven with one eye than go to hell with two. And if you can just walk around with one eye closed, it's, it's encumbering. It's frustrating. But if you got both eyes closed, you can't really see where you're going. And Proverbs says without a vision, people perish. They're restrained they're contained they don't have liberty they don't have joy they are dealing with going places they don't want to go and leading being led by people that they don't know where you're going and you're to be led by the spirit of God within you and uh, there are things that are taking place in the natural that is going to challenge you and emotionally they're going to try to shake you because I honestly, it would not surprise me, and I'm in Tennessee, and we just went to 420 where I'm at, and uh, I, it would not surprise me that gas reached $7 a gallon by September. And you say, well, is it all, you know, Brandon's fault? 99% of it. You say, who's Brandon? The guy you don't know. Never mind. But... There is a spiritual warfare going on. And in this warfare, you need to literally dance, shout, and sing. You say, what do you mean? Because the more warfare, the more of a threat you are to darkness. The devil does not mess with people that's not a threat. But can you respond without regret? Because if the enemy can manipulate your emotions, he'll manipulate your lifestyle. But here in Amos chapter 9, he's speaking and he says that, it says that the rise of, the David, of David, this is fallen, and close, close up the breaches thereof, and I will raise up his ruins, his remnant. Those that, quote, have been taken for granted, those that have been pushed aside, those that, quote, are not noticed. And he says, And I will build it as in the days of old, that they may possess the remnant of Edom, and of all the heathen which are called by my name, saith the Lord, that doeth this. Behold, now this is where that interpreter in, in, in Columbia kind of turned my sermons around, and I found that out after I said it. Because he disagreed with me in front of the people when I said the sower and the reaper shall walk side by side. Because it says here, Behold, the days will come, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes him that soweth seed, and the mountains shall drop sweet wine, and all the hills shall melt. And he, he just, because I said the sower and the reaper shall walk side by side. He couldn't comprehend that. Now, how can I pass you up if I don't at some point walk beside you? And that's the problem we have in church right now. 
is we got some people that are being passed up. And we, they don't recognize that there is a point and a time that people that have gone beyond them walk beside them. You, can you see that? And there's questions sometimes of why this isn't happening and why that isn't happening. First off, when you begin to cast all your cares over on the Lord and you begin to be anxious for nothing and you put your trust in the Lord and you lean not to your own understanding, you'll find that in the midst of calamity, it's not affecting you emotionally because you're not paranoid you're not freaking out. You're trusted in the Lord. And I mean, you know, plain and simple, God's got you back. Especially if you live a fasted lifestyle. Fasting is not always separation from food. Fasting can be separation from people, from news, from television, situations, circumstances. Because fasting's purpose is to separate yourself from Unto, you say, what's unto? Separating yourself from the world unto the presence of God, the word of God, the counsel of God. I mean, you may not see this, but Sunday morning, if you're in church or you're listening to me on Facebook right now, you're fasting. You say, how am I fasting? You have separated yourself from the world to be in the presence of God, to hear the word of God. That's what fasting is. It's not just going without food. Because there's people that go without food all the time. But it's always fasting is separation from unto. And Isaiah 58 talks about that fasting is your rear guard. And your Bible says in Hebrews, not to forsake the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is. But even the much more as you see the days approaching, not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together. You may not see the necessity of church in your life, but there's people in church that are in necessity. They need you. But then you don't see yourself valuable to the kingdom of God. And when the blind lead the blind and you don't think that you need Jesus, you don't need the church, you don't need the body of Christ, you don't need to be a doer of the word, you can serve God at home. I don't know anybody that maybe your dog will hug you, your cat will purr around you, or your family will embrace you, but there's just something about the body of Christ needs you. And, and, and that's why... You need to come out from amongst them and be separate to the point when Peter said, come out from amongst them and you're peculiar people, you're called out of darkness. Coming into light is coming under the presence of God. And when the body is fitly joined together, your Bible says every joint will supply. And there's times you may not recognize that hug and that little bit of love might have stopped the powers of witchcraft in a person's life because the anointing yeah. destroys yoke. Now, how many of y'all are Christians? You know that word Christian means anointed one? Jesus Christ, Jesus the anointed. Christ Jesus, the anointed Jesus. When you read your Bible and it says Jesus Christ, that's man to God. Jesus is man. Christ is the anointing that comes from God. When you read your scripture it says Christ Jesus, it's from God to man. And if you're a Christian, you have an anointing. Well, your Bible says the greater one is in you, doesn't it? So if the sower and the reaper is going to walk side by side, that's for a period of time. Because it's talking about there that the plowman, he that's tilling up the ground, shall overtake the reaper. The one that's tilling up the ground, planting the seed. And you say, well, the scripture says the fields are white unto harvest and the laborers are few. You notice that the sower, the, the plowman, overtaked the reaper. There's going to be more seed out there than there's going to be harvest. And we got a problem. Because a lot of people need, quote, discipled 
Some people need the relationship because if you can provoke one another, the word says in Hebrews, provoking one another unto good works, challenging you. Because honestly, if I don't provoke you, challenge you to find more of God, if I can't take you closer to God, what in the world am I even doing here? Am I just a public motivational speaker? Because I was sharing with my sister earlier uh, that I was in Paris, France, speaking at a pastor's conference. And there's about 40 pastors that was there. And I prophesied and I said, on the day of the rapture, many a pastor will be murdered. Selah, think on that. Now, why would a pastor be murdered on the day of the rapture? Can I just give you a redneck interpretation? If I miss the rapture and I'm submitting to his leadership to take me to Jesus and get me to heaven, and he missed Jesus and missed heaven and I'm with him, I'm going to kill him. You say, but you go to jail, big deal. You know, I can repent for some things. But missing the coming of the Lord, and in the twinkling of an eye, you say, that's mean. Why is it you want to correct me on a, on a thought when you can't correct yourself on an action? Because, see, we always want to be somebody else's conscience while we sit on our blessed assurance and sing, Jesus is mine. And I'm telling you straight up, it's now is a time to be doers of the word and not just hearers only. So, I'm not going to put, I'm not going to embarrass you. I don't think, I won't do it on purpose if I do it. But, Who'd you invite to church in the last three days to come here? See, if you don't tell people of what God has done, then you can't tell people of what God is doing. And if you don't know what God is doing, you have no idea of what He's going to do. Am I making sense? Because, see, there is a move of God, but isn't it so awesome, exciting, and wonderful? The devil's after me, bless his holy name. You say, why is that exciting? Because he don't attack nobody that's not a threat. See, in the book of uh, Timothy, the scripture, and I heard Dad Hagen, Kenneth Hagen, make his statement, and it just makes such a powerful statement. You know, in the book of Timothy, 2 Timothy in chapter 3, verse 12. Well, let me go ahead and back up and read more. He says, Now as Janus and, Janus and, and, and Jambres withstood Moses. Now these are the dudes that divided the house of God are the people of God with confusion and challenging, you know, the power of God and the word of God and challenging leadership. And they withstood Moses, and that's where really when the, the, the people come against Moses, and Moses said, who's on the Lord's side? And the people divided. But when the divided took place, the earth swallowed up those that was against God. And do you realize your past can swallow you up or you lose your focus? You lose your future. You lose your purpose. And, and the word says, how shall they hear without a preacher? Some people need to hear that, quote, you need to shut up and grow up and quick attacking somebody that's doing more accidentally than you doing on purpose. Because, I mean, there's people that's always trashing Joel Osteen. That dude's doing more accidentally than I've ever done on purpose. Who am I? I was an avid follower of his dad. And I know that his dad put righteous seed in him. Now, you may not like, quote, what he's doing, or maybe the problem is you may not like because of what other people are saying instead of what you experienced. 
I remember years ago when Jimmy Swaggart took a nosedive and everybody was trash-talking him because that was a year of the Great Fall. You know, men of God like Jim Baker, Jimmy Swaggart, Marvin Gorman, which was the assistant superintendent, you know, of the, uh, he was the second in command of the denomination of the Assemblies of God, and all three of them took a nosedive in the same year. And, and that was like, you know, wow. But everybody was trashing Jimmy. And so I drove specifically to Baton Rouge, Louisiana, which is four hours away from where I lived. But as soon as I put my foot in the parking lot of the church parking lot, the ministry parking lot, I knew the Holy Ghost hadn't departed. I'm not going to touch God's anointed because I don't like what they do or what they've done. Yeah, some people is. I, I'm a firm believer in Prophet Forrest Gump. Stupid is is how stupid does. There's people that need to quote, you need to get in their face and quit, quote, protecting their emotions. You need to protect their eternity because they're going to have emotions in heaven and they're going to have emotions in hell. And I don't want nobody cussing me out in hell, blaming me for why they're there. So there's times that speaking the truth is painful. I, I mean... I grew up in old school, and my daddy, he'd look and say, Boy, don't you dare talk to me with that look. I'd try to freeze frame it and go look in the mirror to see what I was saying. I never got it good down pat. But I mean, he, he said, I'll slap you into tomorrow if you don't shut up. And I'm sitting there, I don't have a, I'm not saying nothing. But do you realize your attitude? Either you're a peacemaker or a troublemaker. And your Bible says, Blessed are the troublemakers, for they shall reap what they sow. You said, it don't say that, it does too. It says you're blessed because you're going to reap what you sow. Because God's not mocked. What you sow is what you reap. But then he does speak specifically, Blessed are the peacemakers. Now, do you realize Jesus is the Prince of Peace? But for him to keep peace, Psalms chapter 1 is the most descriptive verse where he said, Blessed is the man that walks not after the counsel of the ungodly. What are ungodly people? People that don't think like God, act like God, dress like God. I mean, I, I preached this last week at the church where I was at, and I'm still preaching it because... You know, it's amazing. I mean, and you say, well, this is offensive. Well, get up, walk out. I'm okay. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, right now in public, you know, you don't find women walking around in their panties and bra. You can get arrested. But if you change your name to bikini, you can go anywhere. Is that not true? All you got to do is change the title, and then you can do what you want. I don't believe that there's no transvestite that should get flowers on the Mother's Day. Because they gave up the gender of being a woman to be a man. And then a man can't get pregnant. You can always get chemicals put in your body to make you grow a beard. I mean, ask Javaz, you know, Sonny Bono's daughter. You say you're touching. No, 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 I'm, talk, I'm calling sin, sin. Because, see, you're not going to get in heaven living lukewarm, passive, indifferent. And if you're going to stand for truth, this is what's going to happen in your life. 2 Timothy 3, verse 12. And yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus from God to man. And that means God's opinion to your opinion. You live godly. Shall suffer persecution people are going to talk bad about you yeah now I mean they get really mad when, when Stephen says, was preaching the gospel and they started stoning him they even got madder and covered up their ears because they didn't want to hear it when he said I see Jesus seated beside the father now you can live where you're at right now and stay or you can start to live in your future 
You can start living by the faith of the Son of God. Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet it's not I that's living. It's, uh, I, I live by the faith. Faith is a substance of expectancy. God has a right to expect something out of you because if you got born again, His Spirit moved in you. And if you'll develop a relationship, His Spirit will dwell upon you because there's an anointing within and there's an anointing upon. It's like baptism in a baptistry of water. The outside element surrounds you. But when you get baptized in the Holy Ghost, the river of living water comes out of you and you get the anointing coming out of your belly where what the Word says, out of your belly will flow, uh, you know, the anointing or the river of living water. And, and that anointing comes on you. You're the tabernacle of the Holy Ghost is what Corinthians talks about. And if God lives in you, does he, I mean, uh, as in, Costa Rica, this last trip, we went to Nicaragua, where the economy is good and education is good. The landscaping looks good. But when education's bad, the economy is bad, nobody cares about throwing trash around. And believe me, I mean, when I was in Mexico in the mountains, you know, down there at Tabasco, Mexico, and I went to the outhouse, somebody is using their Bible for toilet paper. I stole their toilet paper. You say, well, you stole it. You need to repent for being a thief. Depends on how you look at it. Because they were disrespecting the most powerful word on the face of this earth. Now, God will clean up your mess if you repent it. But at the same time, you don't use the Bible to justify what you're doing. See, ain't nobody you know in your life worth you going to hell over. And if the sower and the reaper is going to walk side by side and somebody seems to be going with God more than you are, you better play catch up. I mean, y'all heard about the papa tomato and baby tomato and, and mama tomato and they sit down to eat and it was hot so they all got up, started taking a walk and papa tomato turned around and hollered, catch up. You say, why you? Because there's simple things in life that have relevance. And I sent somebody this song that I got out of YouTube the other day. Secular song sung years ago. Lean on me. When you're not strong, I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on. And that's just it. There are things that we separate ourselves from in the world but we still have the same attitude they have. And then there's things that we separate ourselves in the church because we don't want the attitude that they have. And if you can't be a Christian in church, where can you be one? If you can't forgive, if you can't be bigger than other people's problems. See, unity is the clarity of an assignment. If any two shall agree upon anything... Where two or three are gathered together in my. And, and do you realize for the glory to increase, there has to be an end to needless warfare. And I've learned so much in the hell I've been through. I wish I could get started all over again. And there's a lot of things I wouldn't do. Because I have learned there's some arguments not argue, worth arguing about. I told a brother a while ago, I said, the person that wins the argument is the one that can walk away in peace. Can you be in control of how you respond? So, if you're not being persecuted, is what Dad Hagen said, you must not be too godly. Because honestly, light does not argue with darkness. But then again, we don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. Which is worse for me to keep the truth away from you or to love you enough that I love you more than your anger toward me will matter. I got three kids and I sent all three of them the same statement. 
You choose your life and you live it accordingly. But I refuse to let you have control over your eternity. I'm fighting for all three of my kids to go to heaven. And I don't give a rat's butt if they're mad at me. See, I didn't say the other word. See, I, have do, I do have conviction some. Maybe not as much as you, but anyway. In the book of Hebrews, it talks about provoking in chapter 10, verse 24, provoking one another unto good works. Hebrews 2 talks about how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation. Take something for granted. You know what you take for granted can be taken from you. You realize that. And the one you say, well, I've been born again. I'm not going to, quote, fall dead. I agree with that, but at the same time, you can lose the anointing when you find yourself grieving the Holy Spirit. And, and, and do you realize that there's times that I need to be a living sacrifice? If I cannot sacrifice your thoughts about me, then well, who do I fear the most? God's thoughts about me or your thoughts about me? Because honestly, he's the one to fear. Because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And if you got wisdom, wisdom says that's a snake. But if you don't know what kind of snake it is, don't you dare reach down there and try to pet it. I mean, years ago I had a rental house and my son and some of his friends were living there. And I said, I don't mind y'all staying here. I said, but no alcohol, no drugs, and no women. Now, which one of them did they keep? None of them. I went and found a bong in the closet. How many know what a bong is? Oh, yo, wow. <laughs> When's the last time y'all used one? Scared to raise your hand, huh? <laughs> and I found that, and I got into an argument with my son about it, and I left the house. And as I was turning the curb, you know, the, to another street, I saw a king snake crawling across the road. So I stopped, put over, and jumped out and went and grabbed that snake. And holding him on my arm, he wrapped around my, my arm and, you know, putting off a stink. Because when they're mad, a snake will put off a stink, you know. You know, even a water moccasin will put off a stink. It smells like a skunk. I mean, many times we was out picking peas or, you know, in the garden of picking beans. My mother says, boys, I smell a snake. Y'all better be careful. See, we was raised, you know, in the country. But I went, and I went into the room where my son and his friend was, and I took that snake and threw it on the floor. My son jumped on top of the bed with his hands in the air and said, oh, my God. And I said, well, that's the first time you've talked about church in a long time. And I said, when you leave, the snake leaves. As long as you're here, the snake stays. And they left, and I went and got back and got the snake and let him outside in the yard. See, you're not afraid of snakes. What are you supposed to be afraid of? Can anybody tell me what I'm supposed to be afraid of? Because the Word says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of understanding. God is love. But he loves you enough not to take away the most powerful thing in your life, and that's called choice. You don't have to raise your hand, but how many of y'all took a bath yesterday? Or took a bath today? I couldn't tell. I'm, just, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just <laughs> but you bathe because you have preference. You have a priority. I mean, it bothers me that Pop over here can't comb his hair. But he has a resolve there. He solved the problem. It comes automatically combed. And, and some of us, we don't realize that we have priorities because of one word called choice. Shakespeare said it, to be or not to be. That is the question. And when I was in France years ago, one of the greatest interpreters I've ever had, and I'd use him again in a split moment. Man, he was precise, anointed, powerful. When I was 
in, in, in Nicaragua, and there's 1,500 pastors in front of me. They gave me an interpreter that I'd never met before or nothing. And after three minutes of him being my interpreter, I just stopped and looked at him with the mic in my mouth and I, in my hand. I said, you don't pray much, do you? Because he had no anointing. Oh, he could talk the language, but he had no anointing. But David in France, he had the anointing. But David was rank. David stank. And I'd go over here and he'd follow me. I'd go over here and he'd follow me. And I'd try to say, stay over there. He says, no, I got to, I got to. I'm trying to get away from him. Trying to get deliverance. Trying to bind that thing. He wouldn't stay. And I told him after that service, I said, I love you. You're one of the greatest interpreters I've ever had. I said, take a bath. Now, that was selfish on my part, or was it the principle? It was beneficial to him, too. Because I love you, but we're supposed to be already running 200. But there's some people that don't know. You got what it takes. And when you got it, you got it. And when you got it, you need to flaunt it. And that's just it. Do you advertise what God has done? Because if you can't advertise what God has done out of this house, you definitely are cautious of what God is doing in this house. And if you're cautious about what you see, then you're going to question what should be. Am I making sense? Many people can't walk by faith because they'll trip over what they don't see. They'll stop believing in you. And in writing my book that I'm working on now, there's things that God gives me in statements. And do and you realize that if you live by excuses, you'll die because of reasons. And there's things in your life that mean nothing to so many other people. It's not a sin to them. But if it separates you from God's presence, and that's what sin is, it's anything that separates you from God's presence. And to him that knows to do good and does it not, James 4, 17. And there's some of us, we know we should pray. We know we should stay. We know we should, quote, bite our lip. And it's better to walk away and suck your thumb than chew on somebody. You say, some fights ain't worth having. Totally to the max. But if you hurt my baby, I'm going to forget I'm a Christian. I'm going to beat the H-E out of you. And then repent. But if somebody's not suffering mentally, because verbal abuse is just as damaging as many times physical abuse. And, and, and the church is afraid of the world's opinion more than it's afraid of God's opinion. And believe me, angels are not going to walk around you and display the presence of God through you or on you or amongst you if you are not walking upright with God. Because thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in. You should be, the word says in Ephesians 1, we are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We find ourselves going to church but we're not causing the church to go with us. Does that make sense? Because, see, when you walk out of the building, is that anointing on you, or did you leave the deposit here? I mean, you got the Word, but do you go home and live the Word? Because, honestly, there should be more here than what's here. But I don't live up here, so... I couldn't, honestly, there was a cop sitting up the road, and I took their sign, and I'm going down a one-lane road on the wrong side of the road, and I'm wondering if he's going to pull me over and ask me where am I going. Because I couldn't even think of the name of your place that you're at. I just know where you're at. But that's just it. 
I may not know where you're at in the kingdom of God, but I know where you're at right now. And there's people that say they are seeking God, they're hungry for God, but they don't go to church. And they don't realize there's somebody in the church that needs your hug. They need your love. They need your word. They need encouraged and challenged and motivated. Because honestly, what's more important? Your emotions, your feelings, your pride, or your eternity. Because I won't get any more forgiveness after I'm dead. I won't get a second chance at life when I'm dead. Or better yet, if the twinkling of an eye, I disappear and you're left here. You say, what do I do? You better guard your heart with all that's within you. Don't get bitter. Don't get forgiveness. Because, I mean, you still can go to heaven. You might have to be a martyr. You might get killed over the gospel. But I'd rather go to heaven without a head than I would go to heaven with a, go to hell with a head. Am I making sense? But I guarantee you, I'm not going to get on my knees and let them cut my head off. I mean, I ain't going to submit to them cutting my head off. I'm going to fight. They're going to have to shoot me, then cut my head off. You say, you expect? Yeah, I do. You say, how soon? Don't know. Do you realize that they, the government of Israel has already started making plans to build another tabernacle, the third tabernacle is what they called it, on top of the mount over where they got the Muslim temple? And you say, yeah, I read that in the news on, on Israel's birthday. They uh, decided the government made it public that they're making plans to start the third tabernacle. Do you realize that you say, what's that got to do with eschatology or theology or, or, or even Jesus? Whether it's pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib, there's going to be a trib. And what is aphib? What, what's an aphib, nurse? What happens when you have an AFib in your heart? It skips beats. It doesn't have rhythm. And when the world begins to lose rhythm, it loses harmony, and it begins to live for one thing, fear-based self-protection. Because, I mean, you can look. I mean, hey, our nation's already running out of baby food is what they're purporting. And, I mean, in, in this year alone, 22, we have had uh, four food factories burned down you say how does that affect me I don't know you go look on the shelf and see why it's not there and I'm telling you straight up they're setting us up to make us panic and fear they want the riots they want the chaos because they can declare martial law do away with the constitution because they already want to control what you say and how you say it. They've already put to the test that you have to have a shot by mandatory or you lose your job in somebody's life. See, if you're going to have a standard and walk with Jesus, you're going to have to not be controlled by the devil or his kids. And Psalms 1 is the best balancer you'll ever find. Blessed is the man that walks not after the counsel of the ungodly, nor sits in the way of the sinner, nor stands in the way of the scornful. And if you're hanging around people that's trashing other people, just watch out, they're going to trash you. Because if they'll trash others to you in your face, they'll trash you to others in their face. Because love protects what it loves. And you say, I don't like this and I don't like that. Well, then go rent your own building. And call yourself apostle and do your own thing. Because honestly, dealing with people is dealing with problems. Because you've got personality, you've got gender. And I mean, the system of this world and the spirits of this world is wanting to take what the Word says, where the husband's ahead of the wife and Christ is ahead of the church, and he wants to make the women men and men women. And you say, why? Because it totally takes away the government of God with purpose. Because to whom much is given, much is required. And I don't mean to bust your bubble, but Adam did not come out of Eve. Eve come out of Adam. 
And as, 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 you know, Apostle George spoke forth about El Shaddai, many breasted one. God's not a transvestite, but he did have male and female in him. But he clarified and separated the two that dwell amongst you because there's one thing a man can't do, and that's have babies. I posted on Facebook, I said, instead of supporting abortion, let's give free, you know, uh, hysterectomies. That way you can do all the nasty stuff you want to, and you don't kill a baby in the process. But see, we don't hold each other to accountability of the presence of God, so therefore we don't hold people accountability to the Word of God, and we don't hold people accountable to right and wrong. And Isaiah 5 talks about in that day they will call evil good and good evil. And that's true. That's where we're at right now. Legalizing marijuana, you say, well, marijuana is not bad. I'm not saying it's good or bad. I mean, one of the men I pastored, he said, Mark, when I smoke pot and read my Bible, I see Jesus clearer every time. <laughs> my boys offered me $300 cash if I would have smoked pot with them. That wasn't enough money. You say, what do you mean? It takes more? <laughs> Plain and simple, if you've been a parent, if you give a little bit, they'll use it to do a lot. Years ago, I went to Tunica, Mississippi, where they have a whole lot of uh, casinos. And I mean, for five bucks, the buffet is the best food you'll ever eat. I mean, it is awesome. Took my family there. We prayed over the food in public. You say, you in a, quote, gambling casino? Yeah. And my boys wanted me to give them a quarter and said, nope, that'd be the excuse for you to come back and spend more than a quarter. See, you give the devil an inch, he'll take a mile. And I witnessed and prayed for the waitress in front of everybody that was there gambling. I ate at Cracker Barrel yesterday, you know, and I even posted on Facebook, you know, that Cracker Barrel now is, you know, about the old song of roll out the barrel. And anyway, it's an old song years ago about alcohol in a barrel. We're going to have some fun because Cracker Barrel's menu was advertising more alcohol than food. I was there. Food was okay. But honestly, them pushing alcohol is offensive to me. And I talked to the manager about it, and he said, well, I've only been here for a year. And I said, I remember going back here in the early, early 90s where Cracker Barrel had this, I was about that thick and about that big, big old round thing of cheese, and they would have you tell them how much cheese to cut out. And then if you guessed the weight of the cheese, uh, you'd get it free. It's called cutting the cheese. Now, cutting the cheese would have another similar language too. But we're supposedly giving you an understanding. There's a spiritual language you need to develop. There's a spiritual understanding you need to be sensitive to. Because we need to develop the spirit of discernment. Because there's some people that are weighted with the cares of this world that is choking the word. And there's some people out there that need a hug and need some love. Because see, there's just something about God is drawing you to them. But until you step out in faith and hug them and love them and speak what God puts in your heart. Well, I don't want to offend nobody. I'd rather offend you than I would him. Because I got to live with him forever. If I don't please the Holy Ghost, I may not go to heaven. Because believe me, if I don't please the Holy Ghost, if I grieve the Holy Ghost, I grieve Jesus. And if I grieve Jesus, Daddy might get mad. Because honestly, I tell Catholics, I said, you need to accept what Mary did. She gave birth to the salvation of the earth. And if you don't receive what Jesus did for you, mama going to be one mad mama. Because I'd put the hurt on you if you accept, if you rejected what my baby did for you. And that's just it. Are we willing to fight for truth more than we're willing to fight for somebody's opinion of us? in our own imagination of what we think they're thinking about us. You know, you know, like Jim Ed Brown's song with Helen Cornelius. I was looking back to see if you was looking back to see if I was looking back to see if you was looking back at me. I mean, we're thinking for other people and you ain't that smart. 
I don't care if you got a PhD. I don't care if you got uh, several degrees. If God is not giving you the word of knowledge, it's because He can't trust you with what people He show, shows you. Can you love and hug and still speak the truth? Because, you know, to be a daddy means that I hold my baby after I spank their rear. To, to love my kids is to get in their face when they're teenagers and they know more than me. I mean, here I am, almost 65, and my sons, I got a college degree. whoop you do. And they still think they're smarter than me. And it's amazing. I mean, they're just in their 30s. My baby is 19, fixed to turn 20, and she still thinks she's smarter than me. George, you ain't got no kids like that, do you? I guarantee you they're going to argue. If you're trying to build something, they're going to tell you, no, do it this way. You say, but new school has ways of doing it differently. I know it. But you know when something is out of balance? It can affect the long-term strength. And when your relationship with the body of Christ is out of balance and you live at home on Sunday morning instead of going to church and hugging and loving and showing somebody that Christ is in you. Well, they don't let me prophesy. Good. Because, see, just for you to defend yourself means you're guilty of not submitting. Because, honestly, we don't have enough demand in the church of what we believe is the Holy Ghost. Because I'm a firm believer that whoever stands behind the pulpit should have the unction to function and cause things to flow. But we got too many people that see a crack in the dam and we're playing the little boy in, 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 in Holland that's keeping the dam from breaking with our finger. And what you don't realize is that we need a flood. We need something to turn things around. We're trying to prevent the glory of God from coming because we don't want to offend nobody. Everyone of them go to hell as far as I'm concerned. You say, it's me. No, I'm going to please the Holy Ghost. I am not here to make you like me. Keep your cotton picking money. God's got it more than you ever get. It's going to come. It's going to be. You say, how do you know? I know. I know what living by faith is. I know preachers that require a certain amount of money to come preach. I was told of a big name preacher that came to a church and told the pastor, said, well, he said, you have a small church? He said, I require you give me at least a $10,000 honorarium for me to speak at your church. This is a TV preacher. And the pastor said, well, what, we'll take an offer. He said, well, he said, since you're a small church, he said, you keep the difference and just give me the 10000 because that's all I require. So the pastor, on his way to the airport, told the, the speaker, he said, here's your check for 10000 And the, the speaker said, well, I appreciate it. I know it was a strain on you. He said, no, it wasn't a strain on us at all. Because in the offering, you got 100000 and all you wanted was ten. So we kept the ninety. Straight up, people. Grow up. Because a good mama is going to stop the baby from being a bad child. And it's Mother's Day. And the old song went go, M is for the many things you do for me. O is f because you're growing old. <laughs> now I'm not going to sing the song to you, but there was a standard of honor. And today chivalry is hard to find where a gentleman opens the door for a lady. But you're not a lady no more. You're a person. <laughs> and if you're married, you're not a wife. You're a partner. They're trying to reroute your thinking. And the church is adapting. And we're letting the world control us. Here in, first, in, in Hebrews chapter 3. It says in verse 7, Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost said, Today, if you'll hear his voice, harden not your heart. 
in the day of the temptation in the wilderness. And then it says again in verse 15. Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart as in the provocation. Who is more important in your life? I love my babies. I die for my babies. But I'm not going to go to hell over my babies. And whether my kids like it or not, I'm going to tell them the truth. And if you don't like what I say, get over it, suck it up, and leave. Because you say, you're mean. No, I'm not. I'm honest. Because my daddy wasn't mean to me. My daddy loved me. But my daddy, I can remember when I wrecked my dad's truck. And he told me, he says, Mark, you know I love you. He said, yes, sir. He said, you know I've not whooped you yet for wrecking my truck. I said, yes, sir. He says, do you know why? I said, no, sir. He says, because, son, I'm scared. Once I start, I won't stop. If you can't control your anger, it's because you are controlling your joy. Life should be fun, filled with joy. In the book of Ezekiel, let me bring closing. Because without a vision, people perish. And you're responsible with your authority. And you're responsible for your opportunity. And you're responsible for your results. And authority's influence is mama has more influence than daddy. You say, what do you mean? Years for over years when people would get on TV, they'd say, hi, mom. He never said, hi, dad. Have they? I mean, I love my dad, but it was my mother that I protected. And I'm telling you straight up, life and death is in the power of the tongue is what my Bible says in Proverbs. And there's Christians that are sowing seeds of discord. And if you don't resist what they're saying and tell them, I don't want to hear it, shut up. That's not right. You're not right. Because Proverbs 6, God hates those that sow discord amongst the brethren. That's what your Bible says. And the Word says how pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. You say, we'll never dwell in unity. We'll never, neither will you go to heaven either. Because the body is fitly joined together and every joint supplies. And if you're not doing your part, it's because you don't want the blood flowing through you. And if blood don't flow through you, it rots and decays. And in Luke 10, 19, Jesus said, I give you all power and all authority to step on scorpions and serpents. He ain't talking about the bugs and animal. In the Greek, it says types of persons. There are serpents out there, people that are snakes. And now, I mean, you've never heard the, the, the parable or the tale of the possum was going through the woods. And all at once he hears somebody calling and says, Mr. Possum, Mr. Possum. He looks and can't find nobody. He looks over in the shade and there was a snake in the shadow or in the shade with a, a rock had fallen on the snake. And he says, Mr. Possum, can you please get this rock off of me? He says, I can't because if I get close to you, you'll bite me. He says, I promise, I promise, I promise I won't bite you. So the possum goes over there and pushes the rock off of the snake and the snake says, thank you, thank you. He said, but I'm so cold. He said, can I get in your pouch? Because you know possums have pouches where they carry their young, you know, for a period of time. And the, and the possum said, I can't because you'll bite me. And the snake said, no, I promise, I promise I won't bite you. And so the possum said, okay, get warm, you know, until when you get warm, you can get out. And while the snake was inside the pouch, all at once the possum felt to bite. And the snake crawled out. He said, you promised me you wouldn't bite me. He said, well, once a snake, always a snake. There's people sowing discord in the church, and if you don't speak into them the word of the Lord, they're not going to be changed into the image of Jesus. They're being changed into the image of Antichrist. There's no more conviction when right is not right and wrong is wrong. And we need somebody to speak up. Because years ago in pastoring in Louisiana, I had an open vision. I'm walking the perimeter of the church, and I look over the threshold. And I've told you this story before, but for the benefit of those on Facebook, I saw an open vision. No, it wasn't a dream. I don't walk in my sleep. But 
I was walking the perimeter of the church in the day seeking God. And I had an open vision. And I saw a hand holding an hourglass. And I saw the other hand filled with blood. And blood was pouring out of it. And I heard God speak to me. And he said, if time on your hands are blood. And he said, read Ezekiel chapter 3, 17 through 21. And so I went and read it. And it says, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman in the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word of my mouth and give them warning from me. I'm telling you straight up, to whom much is given, much is required. You sit under some great preachers, great anointings, great authority. What are you going to do with, I mean, I like nice thick prime rib. I like a nice ribeye. I'm even content with a hamburger steak. It's got gravy over it. And push come to shove. If all we got is mystery meat, and I called it preacher's steak when I was growing up. It's called bologna because you don't know what's in it. I like it fried myself. But I saw the vision, and God spoke to me and told me to read this. And I can't please you in everything because you I don't care how you look look at it. Some days you're gonna wake up with a bad hair day. Sorry about that, Pop. <laughs> but at least that bad hair day won't last very long, will it? Nope. Oh. And and the thing is though, everybody has problems. Everybody goes through problems. But it's what do you do with your problem? Do they control you or do you control it? Because you can't be an overcomer without something to overcome. But he, he told me, he said, read it. And I made thee a watchman over the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word of my mouth and give them warning. You know right and wrong. You say, well, I'm not the Holy Ghost. I agree. You're not the assistant Holy Ghost either. You can't give people convictions. But you can point them to truth. And the Bible talks about in that day many will sear their conscience with a hot iron. They won't have convictions anymore. And honestly, I don't believe in submitting to nobody beyond my conscience. I'll serve the servant, but I'm not going to submit my eternity to your moment. My most important thing is, am I led by the Spirit of God? Because Jesus said, my sheep know my voice, and a stranger they won't follow. So he says, when I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and you give him not warning, nor speak to warn the wicked from his wicked way. To save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. Hebrews 1, 9 says, Jesus hates. He hates. Oh, but God's love. Yeah, but Jesus hates the works of iniquity. If you do your old thing, it's your thing, do what you want to do. I, I mean, my God. Love is considerate. There's things you put up with. I mean, everybody hold your Bible in the air. No, that's just it. You can hold your phone up in the air, and that's just a phone. But you go in public holding this little black book up, or red book, or yellow book, or whatever you want to call it. People know on Sunday, that's your Bible. But if I hold up my phone... Well, are you watching the football game? Are you watching the baseball game? Well, are you watching a movie? Are you texting back and forth? Who are you talking to on Facebook? I got a Bible, and it's got 27 Bibles in my Bible on my phone. But what kind of witness does my phone have over what this represents? You say, you're nitpicky. Yeah, I know it. I'm here to irritate you. I'm here to put salt in your womb. You see, it burns. Yeah, I know it, but it also gets infection out. And it's time that you be who you are, and you're the light of the world, and the light is in you. And Jesus says, I give unto you power and authority. So he says, if you warn not the wicked, his blood I require at your hand. You could be guilty of somebody else's sin. That's hard. I can be guilty of somebody else's sin. I didn't do it. But when the Holy Ghost told you to say something, 
Are you willing to say, I didn't do it? Can you be honest with yourself? For years, it, it took me years to shake off when God told me to pray for somebody and I didn't. I didn't make time to obey. There's people who are going to die and go to hell and their blood's going to be on your hands because you ain't telling them about your God, your beliefs, and what you really say you believe. So, I'm just going to leave it at that because honestly, it's time on your hands or blood. Do I live in fear of what Biden says? No, if the FBI shows up and the U.S. Marshals show up, all I can do is put my hand behind my back and say, let's go. You say, well, what, what did you do to get arrested? According to the Ministry of Truth, I'm not saying what they want me to say. Every time, and I don't mean this to be derogatory, but if it's what I'm prophetically speaking and releasing because of what I'm knowing, every time I see that man, I see a dead man. He's a dead man walking. You say, how's he going to die? God's going to kill him. And there's nothing the Democrats can do to stop it. Nothing. Nothing. Because after the time comes, there's judgment. And nobody bigger than God. We need a move of God. We need the move of God. But you know what? We can wait on God all day long, but until we do what he tells us to do. Until we do what he tells us to do. Can I speak grace to your mountain? The trauma of what you're going through, you still need to plant your feet, no matter what it looks like, no matter what it sounds like, no matter what it feels like. Plant your feet. Because on Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking Sam. This literally happened to me. I was out feeding the cows and uh, working with a guy on some cows. That the calf cost 3000 bucks. But it's called uh, Devlin's from Ireland. And uh, I was counting the calves. And, and I'd go through the woods, make sure there wasn't a calf in the woods because the coyotes are howling and they're coming. And I'm counting, make sure they got minerals because it's totally grain, range fed. No, no, gra no grain at all. And that's why it's, you know, range fed beef. Expensive stuff. And uh, I'm walking my daughter, and my daughter might be about 10 or 11 years old. And we walk around the pond where it's a dry pond. And we didn't think nothing of it. We just walking on the dry pond. All at once, whew, I hit an ear pocket, air pocket, and I'm up to my waist in mud. You know what hit my mind the first thing? Uh, I thought of Tarzan. You know, I thought of, you know, quicksand. And I'm up to my waist, and my daughter's like an idiot, just laughing and laughing and laughing. And my cell phone ain't got no signal, and I hear them coyotes. And I'm thinking, oh, God, what do I do, what do I do, what do I do? And I saw a log, and I said, drag that over here. She dragged the log over, and we happened to be under a weeping willow tree. And I reached up and grabbed, and she helped me, and I pulled myself up. See, if you respond to your emotions more than you do your logic, you can do, be, you can do damage on everybody. Because my daughter would have been by herself with the coyotes coming over the hill in the pasture. She can't drive a vehicle. The phone has no signal. The greatest strength you can ever offer is be in control of you before you try to control anyone else. Or we used to say years ago, it's called practice what you. And uh, there's so much potential here. Set a go, please. Set a go. Set a go, Pop. Set a go. Everybody here, set a go. I'm going to invite two people this week to come to next Sunday service. And I know some people is not here because they don't like me. I'm glad they don't like me. At least they're not a hypocrite sitting there and griping about what I'm saying and saying I wish he'd hurry up and shut up so I can go home. You say, you provoking us. Yes, I am. Quit being lukewarm. Be hot or cold. Quit being passive. Because, you know, there was a Jezebel in the Garden of Eden. You say, Eve was a Jezebel? There's always an Ahab. There's a Jezebel. 
There's never a Jezzy unless there's an Ahab. And Adam was not man enough to tell the snake to shut up and get out of the garden. Adam was not man enough to flap that fruit out of Eve's hand. He just said, yes, dear, yes, dear, yes, dear, and ate the fruit, which messed up all of our lives. The anointing in you is going to carry you through. And you're going to scorn what the devil's tried to do. But God's going to turn things around visibly. Weeping shall be. But at the same time, integrity is the standard of God's authority. Yeah. I'm sure. Okay. Until, unless he tells me different. Yeah, that's it. That'll work. Court adjourned. Did a snake just hit me? That's true. <laughs>